do another session on joints so this is all about joint biomechanics because joints are also very crucial for your movements every movement you do with your body with your system it involves joints so to have knowledge about joints and how we deal it uh, what are the key terminologies how we classify them all these details will be covered in this lecture and then in the next lecture I will deal with uh, injuries part because uh, it is extensive thing so I cannot cover both things in one lecture so today I will be dealing with uh, all introduction part and in the next uh, uh, session I will be dealing with injuries important injuries which are very common in the sports so starting with the today's lecture about joint biomechanics so what are joints joints are basically point where two bones connect basically so just focus on the first slide good afternoon Arindar. so what is joint joint is a basically in simple words it is a link between the two bones and cartilage what is cartilage so it is also link, uh, involved there cartilage basically it helps to provide cushion in layman language or in very simple terms you can say it is around the bones and it can provide you the uh, basically cushioning part okay so basically joint is linkage between the two bones and it is supported by ligaments so what are ligaments ligaments are the elastic uh, material inside the system which actually connects the bones so in the slide that brown part on left and right you can see these are ligaments uh, and the you can see below the bone both the bones you can see a cushioning is there that is cartilage and uh, this whole structure is known as joint so movement along joint is produced by muscles because muscles are there which will produce force and you require force to do any movement so muscles are the main drivers and rest movement is facilitated by these joints now coming to the next slide a uh, little bit more details about joints just introduction part so that you have some idea about how they are we are not going into the deep details physiological details that is not of your um, in this biomechanics what you should know I am uh, telling in the key points just remember that uh, that much you should know always as a biomechanics or in the biomechanics you should have you should have at least that knowledge so so joints are the connection made by between the two bones and bones makes the skeleton you all know okay so different joints allow different degree of movements and different type of movements this should be focused this is very important there are many types of joints we have and we have different classifications some are classified on the basis of movement they allow some joints are uh, classification is on the basis of structure they have we have also biomechanical classification of joints so there are multiple uh, classifications so in this lecture I'll be dealing with mainly three classifications uh, one are according to their movement one classification is according to their structure and one classification according to their biomechanics biomechanical classification so I repeat joints are classified in multiple ways and why because each joint each type of joint had different types of movements some joints allow some joints allow very smooth movement some doesn't allow at all some allow slight movement so different joints allow different degree of movements different joints have different structure so there are multiple types of classification so mainly three will be discussed in this chapter the first one is uh, I'll be discussing according to structure it is known as structural classification second one will be according to function function means the movement they allow and the third one is the biomechanical classification so these three classification is in your syllabus and you should know as a if you are studying biomechanics you should know all these three so one by one I'll discuss all of them in the later slides so some joints such as uh, this is just an example on the first slide like knee joint shoulder joint elbow joint these are basically joints which allow very frequent movements in all the directions and the joint which is most movable keep in this mind this this keep this point in mind the one 
the joint which is which allows multiple movements uh, movements in all direction which is very highly mobile so that will be prone to most for the sport injury maximum sport injuries usi joint mein hongi jo zyada aapko movement karwayega and common injuries are there only on those joints and which joints allow maximum movements number 1 shoulder joint number 2 knee joint these two are very common in injuries because these joints are, are allowing a lot of movements in all planes so that's why so we'll discuss all these things uh, injuries i'll discuss in the uh, next lecture that is on the monday okay so some joints allow uh, very uh, good amount of movements where they are very mobile and they get self lubricated also they have some system i'll discuss it uh, later and some joints like joints in the skull like sutures they don't allow movement at all and there is no movement necessity there is no necessity of movement there also so nature is very smart uh, nature has planned different types of uh, joints according to the nature of the body because in the brain or in the uh, skull you don't have any movement so there the joints which are there they don't allow movement because it is not required there on the other hand where you require a lot of movement like in your shoulders in your legs so nature has given those types of joints there which allow full movement so this has all planning of nature how they have planned different joints at different locations according to uh, human nature where more movement is required so that type of joint is there where less movement is required so uh, accordingly that joint is there so these joints are different uh, depending upon their movements and their structure okay so coming to the next slide this is all about introduction so first of all i'll uh, dis uh, describe basically two ways of classification first so the first one is structural classification so what is structural classification so joints are classified on the basis of the ways they are connected to each other like which type of binding tissue what is the shape of those joints how bone ends are in the shape how they are connected so all these things come under structure so structure classification this is known as structural classification which is on the basis of how two bones are interacting how two bones are connected whether there is some cartilage is there whether they have concave shape they have convex shape what kind of binding tissue is, is there in that joint so all these structural details when we take into account jab bhi hum structural ke bare mein on the basis of structure bolenge so that joint classification is known as structural classification सेकेंड मेजर क्लासिफिकेशन इज फंक्शनल क्लासिफिकेशन जैसे आपको यू नो फ्रॉम द टाइटल फंक्शन मीन्स द फंक्शन दे परफॉर्म फंक्शन कौन क्या करते हैं बेसिकली जॉइंट्स दे आर बेसिकली इन्वॉल्व इन मूवमेंट्स सो द जॉइंट्स विच आर क्लासीफाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ डिग्री ऑफ मूवमेंट और टाइप ऑफ मूवमेंट सो दैट क्लासिफिकेशन इन नोन एज फंक्शन क्लासिफिकेशन now you have to keep one point and always in your mind that these classifications overlap in practical life so what is the meaning of this this is simply that uh, these classification are not very rigid rigid matlab ye aise nahi hai ki ek joint is ek classification mein aa gaya to dusre mein nahi aayega so they are overlapping for example synovial joint ek hai hamare paas i'll discuss uh, on the functional basis we call it synovial joint but jab hum function ki baat karte hain to freely movement wale joints mein aata hai structure ki baat karenge to synovial mein aa raha hai so basically dono overlap ho gaya the thing is the category is overlap you always keep this in mind don't confuse you should know the mainly the criteria structural is on the basis of structure functional is on the basis of function and move, function is movement so these are the mainly two and the later section i'll discuss the third one that is biomechanical classification that is very simple so first of all we'll focus on these two classification so starting with the structural classification first so let the slide change on your uh, screens then i'll discuss it what is structure classification and what are the types of these so these are the main three structural classifications one number one is cartilaginous joint number two is fibrous joint and number three is synovial joint okay so number one category and you can see in the diagram on the left side we have three these are three types of structural classification number one you can see vertebrae here and the spine photograph is there and these joints are first category cartilaginous joints second one you can see the skull and here this round shape is the 
your joint and these kind of joints are known as fibrous joints and the third one is synovial joints and this joint has proper lubrication system synovial fluid is there so this is third type of so these three categories are on the basis of structure so first one is cartilaginous joint and uh, why we call it cartilaginous joint because it involves cartilages so subtypes are there one is primary cartilaginous joint b is secondary cartilaginous joint what is the difference between primary and secondary secondary has additional cartilage known as hyaline cartilage it is transparent type of cartilage and uh, it is and the looks is transparent so basically it involves cartilages main structural change from other joints is that these joints involves use of cartilages for the connection of bones and the example for this is your spine your rib joints your spine joints are come under this category then second one is your fibrous joints fibrous means they are very dense and they are connected by very dense regular connective tissue which is rich in collagen fibers and example is you can see on the right hand side i have explained in detail so this is a skull and here you the portion has been enlarged so that you can easily see where the joint is interacting and it is also in the ankle so these kind of joints are known as fibrous joints and uh, according to structure and these kind of joints doesn't allow any movement they are very rigid, rigid types cartilage is what uh, cartilage cartilaginous joints allow slight movements fibrous joint doesn't allow any movement and third category is synovial joint these joints allow maximum mobility and these are the one which are maximum injured during sports and examples are knee joint your shoulder joints so now these synovial joints have multiple groups sub classification that i'll discuss on the later slides now in the synovial joint here bones are not joined directly and uh, the third you can see here this is synovial joint the bones have synovial cavity so that tissue structure you can see between the bones that is known as synovial cavity and are united by dense irregular connective tissue that forms capsules and these are these are also Liga, uh, connected by ligaments also which connects the bones and whole this arrangement allows joint to get lubricated and these are the one which will allow you maximum movement okay so these are the three class uh, types of joints on the basis of structure cartilaginous joint fibrous joint synovial joint so cartilaginous joints example is spinal ribs fibrous joint example your skull we have sutures the name of the joint and the synovial joint which allows good movement and have some level cavity example is knee joint so these are all about structural classification now coming to the functional classification of these joints how they are classified on the basis of function and the function is movement how they are uh, classified on the basis of movement they perform or the way they do move so basically there are again three categories here now you will see the overlap here the point i was discussing because these categories have overlaps so first one is your non movable joint first category according to functional base and it is technically also known as sina arthrosis so these kind of joints doesn't move or very slightly movement is there there is no movement at all you can say that and skull sutures is the example which i have discussed right now in the previous slide then second is slightly movable joints or we can also call them amphiarthrosis these kind of joints uh, allow little bit of movement and invertible discs is the example and the third category of joints which allow free movement freely movable joints and these are known as synovial joints and so you now here see that uh, they have the similar name overlap is there and these kind have it is same as synovial joint which i have discussed later on in the structure part they have synovial cavity inside they get lubricated and they are also known as diathrosis and they allow free movement and these are the joints which are affected maximum in the sports so because these joints allow free movements in all planes so this is the main three categories now the third category has sub classification 
Now, uh, another uh, just demonstration in graphic to get because now we'll discuss synovial joint in detail. So, the first slide here now is showing you the synovial joint, how it looks. I've also shown you before, also again, it is uh, you can see the synovial cavity is here. We have cartilages, we have ligaments, and this is all about this is the, this is the way synovial joints looks. Okay. So it allow large range of movements. The range of motion in this kind of joint is very high. Okay. Then articular surface covered by hyaline cartilage. Articular surfaces kya hoti hai? Uh, the point where bone contact, the terminal ends of the bone where they make contact in the joint. These are known as articular surfaces. And these are covered by hyaline cartilages. What is the purpose? For just cushioning so that they don't get friction or something. They get protected. So this is the idea then we have this this cavity is known as which is in between this is known as a joint cavity and it is filled with synovial fluid the fluid which is inside is known as synovial fluid and it is also known as synovial cavity and the uh, the membrane surrounding this cavity is known as synovial membrane and uh, this is the key feature of this synovial joint and the functional wise it uh, it allows a lubrication of this joint so that activity can happen freely and smoothly so this is just an idea how synovial joints looks. Now we'll divide these into subgroups, and uh, please remember all these uh, terminologies and different types because this will help you to understand your body. And for a biomechanics, you should know your body, what kind of muscles they are, what type of muscles their uh, joints we have, and what kind of bones we have. So coming to the classification part, basically we have six main categories of synovial joints. First one is plane joint, second is ball and socket joint, hinge joint, pivot joint, condyloid joint and saddle joint. So I'll discuss all of them and what kind of movement they make and where they are located one by one. So coming to the first category which is known as plane joint. So as you know plane joint means very plain in shapes or the way they are connected it is very plain there is no complexity involved and the movement they allow is gliding movement gliding means a ke upar se glide karte hain. that kind of movement this joint allows and it is a synovial joint which under physiological condition allow gliding, gliding movements and typically they are present in the wrists or ankles so yahan par aapko dikh raha this is uh, separated we have shown you that it is a plane joint Ab, now focus on blue points uh, these are the fingers finger mein aapke joints jo dikh rahe hain. these are plane joints basically and uh, in the wrist also we have in the this, this is a joint in the vertebral arcs in your spine so th here they are present majorly plane joints and they help in the gliding movement so what are the gliding movements uh, to get an idea of gliding movement next slide will make it clear what are gliding movements so basically when the flat surface of the two bones glide across each other we call it we call it as a gliding movement flat surfaces of your bones when they glide across each other now just focus on the these arrows now when you rotate your hand like this the tata karte na you bye bye with your hand so here that gliding movement is happening between the joints of your wrist. So this is the example you can understand gliding movement. Kya hoti hai. This may aapke jo bones hai, ek dusri upar glide karenge when you uh, do this kind of movement. Okay. And this uh, in this way you can very easily understand what is gliding movement. Okay. And ye jo shake kar rahe hand ko I think which plane it is frontal plane because this is a sideways movement right? frontal plane may go right so this is known as gliding now coming to the second category of synovial joints ball and socket joint now these kind of joints ball and socket joint is a subtype of synovial joint and jitne bhi aapko ab che types mein aapko batane wala hu do ek maine aapko plane bata diya this is the second one and this is the joint ball and socket joint which is maximum gets affected 
इन गेम्स बिकॉज ये जो जॉइंट है इसकी जो जोमेट्री है द वे इट इज इट अलाउज वेरी गुड अमाउंट ऑफ मूवमेंट्स वेरी रेपिड मूवमेंट यू कैन मेक इट एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द शोल्डर इट इज प्रेजेंट इन योर नीज जहाँ से आप आपको हेल्प करते हैं भागने में यू रन यू मेक लॉड ऑफ शोल्डर मूवमेंट्स इन ईच एंड एवरी गेम यू हैव सो यही जो है जॉइंट जॉइंट सबसे ज़्यादा डिसलोकेट होता है एंड दिस इज द जॉइंट विच यू शुड स्ट्रेंथ एन अलाउट इफ यू आर प्लेइंग एंड वन थिंग आई मेक इट क्लियर कि इंजरीज का जब तक जो बात होती है यू ऑलवेज टॉक ऑफ कि हाउ वी कैन प्रिवेंट सो बेसिकली देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ इंजरीज ब्रीफ में बता रहा हूँ कि वन इज कॉन्टैक्ट इंजरी जो कॉन्टैक्ट गेम्स होती हैं जैसे रग्बी हो गया फुटबॉल हो गया जहाँ पर आपका रेसलिंग हो गया वेर यू हैव कॉन्टैक्ट विद योर अनदर ऑपोनेंट सो वो जो इंजरी है वो यू दैट इज यू कॉन्ट रजिस्ट दैट अगर वो हो गई तो हो गई सो वॉट यू कैन डू इन दैट केस यू शुड बी स्ट्रेंथ यू शुड हैव स्ट्रेंथ इनफ कि आप उसको झेल पाए यू शुड यू शुड हैव एबिलिटी टू फेस दैट अदरवाइज अगर इम्पैक्ट ज़्यादा है एंड द एंगल इज लाइक दैट यू कैनॉट सस्टेन इट देन यू विल हैव दैट इंजरी बाय मैकेनिक्स हेल्प यू इन इम्प्रूविंग योर टेक्निक द इंजरीज विच कैन हैपन ड्यू टू रॉन्ग टेक्निक देर आर सम देर आर मल्टीपल वेज यू कैन इंजर योर शोल्डर बाई डूइंग रॉन्ग थिंग बाई डूइंग रॉन्ग ट्रेनिंग सो वो जो चीज़ें हैं दैट विल दैट बाय मैकेनिक्स विल हेल्प एंड थर्डली हाउ यू टू स्ट्रेंथन इन दैट केस ऑल्सो बाय मैकेनिक्स हेल्प कि हाउ यू स्ट्रेंथ योर मसल सो दैट शोल्डर जो काफ़ी सेंसिटिव है या डेलीकेट है सो यू कैन प्रोटेक्ट दैट बाई योर स्ट्रेंथनिंग योर मसल्स विच कैन स्टेबलाइज इट सो दिस इज थर्ड वे सो आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू मेक इट क्लियर यहाँ पर काफ़ी कन्फ्यूजन होता है लोगों को दे आस्क क्वेश्चन हाउ वी कैन प्रिवेंट शोल्डर इंजरीज सो विद बाय मैकेनिक्स सो बाय मैकेनिक्स कैन हेल्प यू टू स्ट्रेंथन यूर जॉइंट बाय मैकेनिक्स कैन हेल्प यू टू प्रिवेंट इंजरीज विच आर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ टेक्निक एंड थर्ड पॉइंट वैन यू हैव कॉन्टैक्ट इंजरीज जैसे धक्का लगा पुशिंग हुई पुलिंग हुई विद अनदर ओपोनेंट दैट केस दैट इज समथिंग एल्स दैट यू हैव टू सस्टेन इट ओके नाउ टॉकिंग ऑफ बॉल एंड शॉक एंड जॉइंट्स सो बॉल एंड शॉक एंड जॉइंट्स आर द वन विच अलाउ मैक्सिम मूवमेंट्स एंड ये है इसका शेप यू कैन सी दैट इन दिस वॉट हैपन इज द वन बोन विच इज कनेक्टेड इट इज लाइक शोल्डर बोन यू कैन सी दैट इट कैन रोटेट वेरी फ्रीली इट इज जस्ट इट्स एंड इज लाइक ए बॉल और जो दूसरा बोन है जैसे हमारा कॉलर बोन में शोल्डर जुड़ता है लुक एट द ब्लो साइड बिलो फिगर तो द शोल्डर द कॉलर बोन विच यू हैव दैट विल एक्ट एज ए सॉकेट एंड योर आर्म बोन जो आपके साथ आ रहा है दैट इज एक्ट एज ए बॉल सो दिस इज नोन एज बॉल एंड सॉकेट जॉइंट एंड इन दिस वे इट कैन अलाउ वेरी रेपिड मूवमेंट्स सो The ball and socket joint is a type of sinuous joint in which the ball-shaped surface of the one rounded bone fits into the cup-like depression of another bone. So this kind of arrangement allows very infinite, uh, indefinite number of, uh, of uh, axes. The movement is allowed in indefinite number of axes, and uh, this enables the joint to move in many directions. And examples are your hip joint, shoulder joint, and knee joint. And the most affected in sports are your shoulder and knee. That are maximum reports we have. uh next slide will tell you about the movements this joint allows har ek joint har ek slide ke baad aapko ek next alag se repeat uh, slide i am showing you there you can see the arrows which will help you to understand kaisi movements it allows you now you can see full rotation it is allowing uh, sideways movement it is allowing up down it is allowing so you uh, up, you know better your shoulder can do any movement in all the directions okay so that's why Uh, it is no, it is affected most and most mobile among all joints ball and socket joints are the most mobile pehle maine aapko the synovial joints allow free movements and synovial joints ball and socket joints are the sub type of synovial joint which allow maximum movement and uh, examples you already know and movements you already know from this figure okay now coming to the third category which is known as hinge joint लेट्स अ स्लाइड चेंज इन योर या सो हिंज से आपको पता लगता है जैसे ये हिंज है जैसे डोर का हिंज होता है उस टाइप का इसका शेप है सो हिंज जॉइंट इज द बोन जॉइंट इन विच द आर्टिकुलर सर्फिस आर्टिकुलर सर्फिस क्या होती है द द टर्मिनल सर्फिस ऑफ द बोन वेयर दे मेक कॉन्टैक्ट एक बोन का सर्फिस और दूसरा बोन जो कॉन्टैक्ट में है जो टर्मिनल एंड है जहाँ पर दे कॉन्टैक्ट करते हैं उनको आर्टिकुलर सर्फिस कहते हैं इन मेडिकल साइंस सो द हिंज जॉइंट इज ए बोन जॉइंट इन विच आर्टिकुलर सर्फिस आर मोल्डेड टू ईच अदर इन अ वे 
दैट दे अलाउ मूवमेंट इन वन प्लेन सो यहाँ पर मूवमेंट फ्रीली है लेकिन इट इज ओनली पॉसिबल इन वन प्लेन एंड बिलो यू कैन सी द फिंगर इट इज प्रेजेंट द फिंगर ज्वाइंट लाइक डी आई पी पी आई पी एम सी पी वॉट आर दीज डिजिटल इंटर फेलेंजील प्रोक्सिमल इंटर फेलेंजील एंड मेटाकॉर्पो फेलेंजील दीज काइंड ऑफ ज्वाइंट विल अलाउ मूवमेंट इन ओनली वन प्लेन यू कैनॉट मूव योर फिंगर बियॉन्ड दैट यू नो दैट what is uh, you what you can do with your finger you cannot lift it up on the opposite side you can do just below that towards the ground so one plane movement is allowed and this kind of joints is known as hinge joint now coming to the next slide which will let you know the movement how it is done so this will make it very clear so hinge joint movement you can see here so it is just like a hinge and just focus on the arrow so it will allow movement on only in this direction only in this plane only okay now coming to the next joint we have that is fiber joint now this joint is more focused towards rotation it allows rotatory movements point joint fiber joint allow a rotation which can be external or internal for example when you are rotating your arm outward so that is outward rotation when you are rotating your arm inward there is inward rotation so these rotation movements are provided by this kind of joint synovial joint pivot joint for example when you are rotating forearm these movements uh, the typical movements which we in the biomechanics language we call pronation and supination you know so these movements of your uh, radius and ulna are possible by with this pivot joint and just focus on this रेडियस एंड अनलाइन बिलो सो इट इज़ वेरी सिमिलर ऊपर मैंने आपको जॉइंट का शेप दिखाया इट इज जस्ट लाइक ए क्लेंज विच इज विच विच दिस जॉइंट विल हैव विल बी एबल टू रोटेट वेरी फ्रीली सो इट अलाउज रोटेशन सो सिमिलर मैले यू कैन से द रेडियस एंड अल्ला आर जॉइंट विद ईच अदर विद दिस जॉइंट एंड दिस जॉइंट इज नोन एज पाइवेट जॉइंट एंड वट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर विच आई एम शोइंग यू दिस इज नोन एज डिजिटल रेडुलर आर्टिकुलेशन a joint between the two bones in the forearm radius and ulna so it allows rotation movements pronation and supination fiber joint and the next slide you will see uh, how the movements are done for the more clarity so in the pivot joint you can see very clearly now this is the same joint uh, uh, between radius and ulna so this is the way rotation it allows okay fiber joint now coming to the next category condyloid joint so this joint will allow it is similar to ball and socket joint but there is one difference one major difference is that it allows movement in only two planes it is not like ball and socket because ball and socket allowed multiple rotation even in the 360 this doesn't allow it this allow movements only in the two planes and kind of movement is allow are flexion extension abduction reduction circumduction is also possible and it is basically present in the wrist see and on the right hand side you can see this it is it has it share a lot of similarity with the ball and socket but it doesn't allow that much movement and the joint is known as condyloid joint and it is present in the wrist joints and this is the structure and here you can see in the wrist it allows this kind of movements and in the next slide you will uh, get an idea of actual movements two plane me kaise karte hain so there will be two arrows now you can see the two arrows are two planes one is this and one is frontal and one is sagittal you can say that so in this way it allows two plane movements condyloid joints now coming to the next category which is saddle joints now saddle joints are also allowing you uh, two way uh, two plane movements and they are said to be bilateral line movements in sagittal and frontal plane again and uh, the movements of saddle joints are similar to those of condylar the movements are same like again frontal and sagittal plane mein and these are present at very few points uh, one of the example is your Uh, in the thumb basically it is present in the thumb the this joint 
in your hand and the thumb area where this thumb bone will join and this is the shape of this bone and it also allows you know the thumb you can either uh, move it in the sagittal plane or frontal plane so these two kind of movements are allowed in the saddle saddle joint the only difference between saddle and condylite is uh, the shape only there is shape uh, the condylite joint is more of like a ball and socket joint but this one is a little bit different in the shape that is only different the movement, type of movements are almost same again uh, this uh, again next slide will show you saddle joint movements with the arrows so you can clearly see here one is your frontal plane and this one is your sagittal so it allows movement in these two planes only so this is all about saddle joints so this covers your all uh, types of subtypes of uh, synovial joints and this is the all classification medically which is followed throughout the world now the third classification i will discuss uh, with you which is known as biomechanical classification so what is the biomechanical classification of joints so biomechanically they are divided into three part in three types the first one is your simple joint so what is simple joint simple means when there are only two articulation surfaces means jab aapke bones joint mein sirf दो मेजर बोन्स इन्वॉल्व है देर इज नो थर्ड बोन इन्वॉल्व मतलब मल्टीपल बोन्स नहीं है देन वी कॉल इट सिंपल जॉइंट एग्जाम्पल इज शोल्डर जॉइंट हिप जॉइंट नी जॉइंट देयर वी हैव ओनली सिंपल टू बोन्स आर्टिकुलेटिंग विद ईच अदर सेकेंड इज कंपाउंड जॉइंट कंपाउंड में वेन वी हैव मल्टीपल सर्फेसिस लाइक रिस्ट में जब हम बात करते हैं रिस्ट में मल्टीपल फिंगर्स के जॉइंट्स आ गए so jo radio carpal joint and there we have multiple surfaces more than two three or more articulation surfaces there so that is known as compound joint biomechanically and third one is complex joint uh, where we have another structures involved in, ad in addition to bone surfaces like we have articular disc or meniscus this is basically cartilage haline cartilage and uh, significance kya is cartilage ka hone ka it helps to balance your weight it is also technically known as meniscus so meniscus act as a to disperse the weight of the body and reduce friction during movement so knee joint mein ye paya jata hai mostly most of the times and on the right hand side you can see this is basically cushioning or it is a cartilage basically it will help you to provide cushions and uh, reduce friction and help you to balance your weight and if it goes or if it gets tear down then it can lead to great damage to your knee and uh, the meniscus spread the load of the body weight because this is a very crucial thing biomechanically aapka pura body ka weight jo uh, jab knees aapke lete hain so this disc or this cartilage will help to balance it otherwise if it is teared or some problem is there then there will be lack of friction there will be more friction in your knee joint and that can lead to damage of permanent damage to your knees and ye basically happens in very if you are very overweight एंड ऑफन जो काफ़ी ओबेस होते हैं लोग बहुत मैन और वुमेन जो काफ़ी ज़्यादा एक्सटेंसिवली मतलब बहुत ज़्यादा हैवी होते हैं तो उसमें बेसिकली ये जो काटलेज आपकी है ये डिस्क जो है वी नॉ मीनस की दैट गेट डैमेज एंड दैट लीड्स टू डैमेज इन देयर नीज तो फिर नी रिप्लेसमेंट होता है इन uh, players we don't uh, find it that much but in the players in the sports injuries we have some tears due to rapid force like that wahan pe overweight ka chakkar hai nahi because they are fit already there are some other forces like bending forces or shear forces leads to damage so i'll discuss these injuries in the next class so this is about biomechanical classification now coming to what are the biomechanical advantages of joints how they are by which in which principle they are helping joints so first one is your liver anatomic liver you all know we have already discussed and in your diploma classes you already know what is liver so it is basically it's very simple physical machine which allows you to uh, do more of amount of work with less application of force so it increases your efficiency okay so now 
there are three classes of levers you already know class one class two class three in front of you, you can see so anatomical lever is formed by three major body parts so the longer part in the lever is formed by your bones the fulcrum part is your joints so if there is no joint no lever can be formed so in the formation of anatomical lever joints play major role in all three classes and here you can see the example first class second class third class you already know just for reference i have put these figures again the first one is when the axis is in the center axis means fulcrum or your when your joint is in the center and resistance is your load and the force which you are making by muscles so the when the axis is in the center we call it first class lever when the your axis is on near the resistance or you can say that resistance in the center axis on the right side force on the left side then it is known as second class and the third class is when your axis and uh, resistance are opposite side your applied force is in the middle and the example is when you are lifting some weight with your arm so this kind of lever is maximum found frequency of this lever is maximum in human system third third type so here you can see the force okay this is the resistance now where the axis where there is a joint here is the joint so aapko dikh raha hai joint is here so this is axis and this is resistance the load which you are carrying and this is the force so force is in middle so that's why third class of lever is present in maximum frequency so this is all about lever you already know so joint in biomechanically where it helps it helps in the formation of anatomical lever and these are the advantages you already know that apply to joints second major uh, biomechanical advantage of uh, joints are movements which you do so all those movements you already know like flexion extension dorsiflexion plantar flexion that is of your ankle abduction adduction circumduction in all these movements uh, joint joints are involved and joints help playing crucial role if there is no joint or some there problem if there is some problem in the joint these movements are not possible and these movements are building blocks of your body building blocks of your movements and in other words these are the building blocks of your game if you are not able to perform these well you can't play well so in this way biomechanical advantage second major advantage of joints are the joints with joints these movements are possible now two or three terms which are biomechanically used to describe joints i'll discuss and then we'll conclude so what is osteokinetic movement of joint osteokinetic movement of joint so in simple terms when you apply force to do when you have whenever you have to do a movement for example you have to throw a ball or you have to kick a ball so you have to apply force so that a force will come from your muscles because when muscle contract only then force will produce and then force will that then for that produced force by you will do the movement so this kind of movement jo aapne force lagaya muscle ne and you executed that jo physically visible hai ki physically visible kya hai aapne laat ko aapne kick mara ball ko we can see that you have kicked the ball so i can see from my bare eye ki that person has kicked the ball kyunki mujhe leg movement uski dikhegi that he is kicking the ball so this movement is known as osteokinetic which i can see on the major part where you have making movement okay when you apply force when you are throwing a ball then i can see your arms are moving so the ultimate resultant movement which you can see physically is known as osteokinetic movement so osteokinetic movement describe how each bony joint partner moves related to each other now i can see your arm is re uh, moving related to your body your when you are kicking i can see your leg is moving related to your body so the major bone movement which which i can see from my bare eye when you make a movement that movement is known as osteokinetic movement of joint kyunki wo movement joint ne karwaya but mujhe kya dikh raha hai bare eye se i can see the movement that leg is moving you are kicking the leg uh, kicking the ball uh, you are throwing a ball i can see your arm moving so i can see that movement but movement is uh, actually possible by your muscles and your joints so this is known as osteokinetic movement of joint now another term is arthrokinetic movement 
what is that so third point please focus on third point the specific movements that occur at the articulating joint surfaces are at the orthokinematic means jo movement i cannot see in layman language i am telling you i cannot see the bone surfaces from my bare eye can i see एक्सर तो नहीं लगे ना प्राइज में क्या बॉडी के अंदर हो रहा है आपने बॉल को किक किया मैं आई कैन सी योर लेग मूविंग आई कैन नॉट सी द बोन्स इन साइड हाउ दे आर इंटरेक्टिंग हाउ दे आर मूविंग जो जॉइंट्स में इन्वॉल्व है सो दैट आर्टिकुलेटिंग जॉइंट सर्विसेज आर रेफर्ड एज आर्थो कनाइमेटिक मूवमेंट तो सिंपल है जो मूवमेंट आप देख सकते हैं बाहर से दैट इज आर्थो कनाइमेटिक द वन विच इज एपनिंग हिन साइड बिटवीन द बोन्स at the joint place that is known as orthokinematic okay so next slide will make it more clear so here you can see the uh, movement of leg so on the left side you have you, uh, you can see when uh, he is making some uh, now he has flexed his leg at the knee joint so you can see it so flexion aapko dikh raha hai on the leg so that is osteokinematic but what is happening inside the bones that is orthokinematic so this is the difference and the last uh, definition of uh, this class is mechanical axis of joint so what is that the mechanical axis of joint is defined as a line passing through the moving bone yahan par aap dekhe this is a joint this is all uh, shoulder joint ball and socket here to ye बॉल है आपका और इस सॉकेट में लगा हुआ वेन इट वेन इट विल स्पिन सो द डायरेक्शन ऑफ एक्सिस इज परपेंडिकुलर टू दिस मूवमेंट सो दिस एक्सिस नोन एज मैकेनिकल एक्सिस मैकेनिकल एक्सिस जॉइंट इज लाइन पासिंग थ्रू द मूविंग बोन तो बोन कौन सा मूव कर रहा है दिस वन इसके थ्रू जो पास कर रही है परपेंडिकुलर टू द सेंटर ऑफ बोन परपेंडिकुलर टू द सेंटर ऑफ द स्ट्रेचिंग जॉइंट सर्फेस अब यहाँ पर ये दिस इज द जॉइंट बॉल एंड सॉकेट दिस दिस बोन कॉलर बोन इज इज स्टेशनरी and this shoulder bone is moving so ye jab rotate kar raha hai iske center mein se jo line jayegi perpendicular center of stationary ab ye stationary kaun sa hai iske center se perpendicular so this line is known as mechanical axis hope it is clear and last slide is three key joint surfaces movement ab joint surface pe kuch movements hoti hain jo aapas mein bone surfaces karte hain so that are known as key joint surface movements and these are basically spinning movement rolling movement and sliding movement so spinning you already know jo shoulder and uh, ball and socket joint mein shoulder pe spin karta hai jo bone move kar raha hai charo direction mein you can spin it so that is spinning action now what is rolling and sliding rolling you can see on this first figure roll occurs when one uh, when points on the surface of one bone contacts point of at the same interval of the other bone मतलब कि ये बोन पहले यहाँ पे था और रोल करके इधर आ गया सो दिस इज नोन एज रोलिंग मूवमेंट बिटवीन द जॉइंट्स सरफेस ऑफ जॉइंट्स में एंड वन इज स्लाइडिंग मूवमेंट इसमें आपका जो मूविंग बोन है स्लाइड करेगा इट इज ऑन द राइट साइड देन इट गॉट स्लाइड टू लेफ्ट साइड सो दिस इज स्लाइडिंग मूवमेंट एंड दिस इज रोलिंग मूवमेंट एंड स्पिन मूवमेंट दैट आर ऑलरेडी शोल्ड यू इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड दैट इज बॉल एंड शॉक एंड जॉइंट्स so this are the uh, three main kind of surface movements happening in the joints so that's it about the biomechanics this covers whole your biomechanics of joints in the next class i will dealing with the very important jo bahut hi zyada paayi jati in the sports uh, injuries so that i will discuss uh, so that's that's it for today i hope you like the concept इट इज़ मोर ऑफ फिजोलॉजिकल बट कुछ कॉन्सेप्ट आपको इसमें फिजोलॉजी भी आपको पता होना चाहिए विच इज़ रिलेटेड टू बायो मैकेनिक्स एंड प्लीज़ लाइक द वीडियो आप लाइक नहीं कर रहे हैं दिस इज योर असाइनमेंट टूडे जितने भी मैंने वीडियो अपलोड किए हैं जाके लाइक कीजिए सो दैट विल अलाउ टू ग्रो माई चैनल अभी लाइक करके आना प्लीज लाइक द राइट नाउ वेलकम प्लीज लाइक द वीडियो for the welfare of channel thank you